had. Do you live a life of preparation? For example, you're looking into venture into business. Have you done the nitty gritties to understand what it entails? Types of taxes you need to pay, tax, types of permits, and that field or that industry that you want to get into, what they go through, the ups, the downs. Do you have everything, a checklist to be able to understand by the time you venture into something, you, do, you don't fall hard. And having the experience to learn from others who will tell you you don't start it, it, it will start by you to pick the way you pick. It can pick six months, eight months later. Are you prepared to go through and do it the work? Are you invested to come to a point whereby you work under someone? Are you humble enough to work under someone to learn from them? Even if they're the worst of the leaders, but they're giving you the work, they're putting you into the field. Are you learning? You're a student. You want to get uh, to, to get into a particular field to which you are studying in, maybe in a third year. So you become an attache your three months before you get your recommendation letter. Are you ready to be sent? Tell this, do this, do that, and still do the here and there, and in that process still learn within your three months and build networks. Let's say you're an intern, you finish your campus and everything, you want to get into that job. Are you humble enough to work under a company or an institution or someone and learn from them? Let's say you want to acquire new skills and you don't need to go through the whole school system, educational system. You've identified who is into that field that you're interested. Are you ready to work under them? Are you ready to do the work? Are you ready to get your hands dirty? Say you want to venture into farming. And let's say you want to move it from uh, agri-farming from the techno perspective. Are you ready to do the work on the ground so that you can understand whatever technologies, whatever things that you want to, imp to bring to make farming easy to work. So are you ready to go into the market? Are you ready to put on those gambles? Are you ready to go get into the mud? Are you ready to understand the logistics? Are you ready to wake up early in the morning, the AMs, and understand how the grocery ladies or the mamambogas move from one place to another, what it costs them? Are you ready to work next to them? Are you ready to understand the conversation about this is the new product, a new product is found at early morning hours? Are you ready to do the work? You want to get into boutique, you want to get fresh, let's say second-hand clothes, for example, or even the first and whichever. I need to understand how that process, the logistics. Are you prepared for it? Are you open-minded for it? Because just can't sit down and just watch someone say ABCD without putting their work. You see, education is not is only valuable if it's put into practice. But it's useless if you only learn all this information and the only do you sit with it. How do you expect your talent to grow? when you're sitting there and doing nothing about it. You want to acquire a new skill, you have to venture into people who are in that field and understand what skill set do they have and then be able to acquire that skill set and become better in it. You see, David didn't wake up and become a king overnight. He had to tender to the flock, worked under being the youngest under his father. He had to be, to be humble enough to be sent by his father to his brothers who looked down on him. He had to be humble enough to be the one to play the harp for King Saul. He had to be humble enough that when he was sent into the battlefield to be able, after he has won, not to go and be, stomp his chest and say, I did it, but to be humble enough to work under the kingdom. He had to be humble enough, despite what he endured with King Saul, to still give him his respect, despite all the pain, all the massacre that was done by King Saul, and still acknowledge him as a king, up until when King Saul lost the battle with the Philistines. Then he got rightfully what was meant for him. Though it costed him. Are you ready to be Moses? Who was first uh, raised as a prince in Egypt 40 years. And then another 40 years after he killed the Egyptian, ran into the Midianites. 40 years under Jethro. And then 40 years later, and before this, uh, when he turned 80, and be able to be humble enough and be advised by Jethro, his father-in-law on leadership and how to delegate and then the other 40 years remaining to his death that one is now going through the process of removing the Israelites and then bearing with them mind you they couldn't understand each other remember he was a prince prior then he was a shepherd so he he literally spent his 80 years first within two nations which were not so related into his own people
And then imagine you're in two these different backgrounds and then you're dealing with people who they don't know you. And that's why they always ran to Aaron. Because they're like, we don't know this guy. And despite all he did, they never respected him. But to this very day, they still say, people still use this law. It's used all across the world. You understand? So, but there's a preparation. You have to work under someone. You have to be humble enough. Joseph, despite being able to be where he was, he worked under King Pharaoh. And even you saw how he was able to even organize that the land would be taken the way when the, dra the, the, the drought had become to uh, peak, how they were able to sell the land and became a law to this very day. Are you humble enough? Are you humble enough to be Queen Esther, to work under King Asarius? Men who were men of war, men who did not give a care about anyone but themselves, men who bow down to idols and all these things. Are you humble enough? Are you humble enough to be able to do the work? Are you humble enough to be able to understand what it will cost you? Are you humble enough to be able to be taught and be told? Are you humble enough to work under authority? Agree to disagree and learn for the season. For Samuel to be able to lead here to work under Eli. Was it easy? No. But he was humble enough. And now we come to where we are as a world. Are you prepared for where we are going for those who are Christians? Are you prepared? Do you read your Bible? Do you meditate on the word? Do you have a personal relationship with God? Because the world that we are living in won't stop being wicked. The book of Daniel, Revelation, it has told us enough times that far it will cost us a lot and wickedness won't change. They showed you in the Paris Olympics. They showed you in Commonwealth 2022. And they'll keep showing it and it will be bluntly in your face. What was a child, a little child, doing in front of a biology men, biological men calling themselves women? But the world has accepted that crap. But are you prepared for what is coming as a Christian? Are you prepared to know that you may live or never live? Are you prepared to understand that once this World War Three happens and the world has gone into chaos and eventually the man of lawlessness comes saying uh, peace and safety and then says, hey, I know we brought these problems, those Christians, those people believe. And then again, you've not only survived the World War, now you are into another one. Now you are being hunted down because you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you ready for that? Because you'll be sold by your family. You'll be sold by your friends. You'll be sold by your children. Some will live. Some will die. Some will be tortured. Are you prepared? What life are you living right now? That job won't save you. Because when that thing happens, whether it will start as a war or whether it will start, a, you won't be prepared when it happens. It will get you wherever you will be. Whether Maybe that is the day you're getting that opportunity for that job. Let's look at COVID, for example. What happened during that moment? There are people who are going to this, to a new country, let's say it was a new country for them, and they had gone maybe to study or work, and then the world stopped for them. Now all the borders were locked. There's someone who left their marriage thinking uh, who was going to cheat, but now they are locked in another area. And this person was innocent. Someone was ended up in that area. That's how someone found a wife, another lost. Or found a husband, another one lost. People, others took off their life because it was too much to bear. People ran crazy. That's when people came to know, oh, this is my wife, this is my husband. Because before pre-COVID, people would run around and do things the way they wanted. Then COVID happens and everyone is told you're stuck in one room. Two years, depending on the country to which you are in. The thing is, are you prepared for what's coming? Do you read your Bible? Do you think when that moment it happens, wherever it will find you, do you think you will run with your Bible? So how is your spirit built right now when the opportunity is available? You think right now, the way the world is going, you think the Bible in its physical form will be easy to get? Three quarter will be versions that have been changed. And even to get that Bible, it will cost your life. Look at the countries which are ex executing people because of reading. You have the privilege to be able to read the word. You have the privilege to be able to pray. You have the privilege to be able to listen to different sermons from different 
men and women of God's servants, and to be able to discern who is who. When the opportunity God has given you, don't assume it. Because when this time is come, this time is come, but that time is coming. When others will be taken and others who are saying, oh, I will do this, I will do that, are left. And then they are left to their man of lawlessness. And then now their life, they'll have to give their life to survive because now they've seen the wickedness. What will happen to their womb, those who will have children? Imagine living in a world whereby all the darkness, where God, right now God is restraining everyone. The devil has been put into restraint, despite what we are going through. Yes, they are opening the hydro, the sun, and we have all these other things, projects we are seeing where people are opening portals, yes. But the time will come when those portals will release those demons which they cannot handle. They will turn mad, they will turn crazy. Look at everything that's in Revelation. Even despite everything, they still do not humble themselves and repent. But that's where the world is going. They've shown you about super soldiers. You think these things are jokes. These things are real. Some of, look at some of these shootings that we're seeing in the world. Someone just walks up, goes, shoots. They become numb. They shoot themselves. We never get to hear who they were, when they were, but their story ends. Some of them could be kids who are once kidnapped, grown into places, and just a word, a trigger. But these things, you see them. Movies like Jason... Uh, Born Identity that was done by Matt Damon then different versions came out of it. Yes, they show it and they show it to believe them. They're doing something. They show it in our faces. Super soldiers. They've shown it. It will come to pass. It is happening. They show you giants and all these things. Their version of giants. But these things are happening. They're letting you accept all these Marvel kind of characters. So what kind of content are you listening to? Because whatever content you're listening to is building you. When you go to sleep, if you've never had prepar sleep paralysis, my friend, it's not a joke. Whether it is out of the things we've watched that have led these doors or just attacks. Entertainment industry, witches and warlocks, openly saying, musicians openly doing all these demonic things and people call it shock value. What shock value is there? It's real. They're telling you when they're calling their alter egos, not alter in things. These are just demons they're summoning. And they're telling you, and they're there saying, oh, it's entertainment. What entertainment is that? Life is spiritual. Open your eyes. Pray. Discern. Right now, when someone dies, what's the first thing people do? They will come to the funeral. Right now, like in our country, for example, in Kenya, for example, what happens? When someone dies, after it's been known is they die, they open our subgroup. People do their contribution. The funeral happens, pop, 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 gone. By 3 p.m., I mean, around 3 p.m., cars have already started line. People say, hey, let's go. Some people, that's their day. They're looking for a day for look for an, uh, for an off day at work. They don't care what happened to your story. No one gives up. Because in your, in, your, in, in your funeral, in your eulogy, people won't talk about, people won't talk about the things that you've done. People won't talk about all this week, these mistakes you've done. People won't care. People are like, did he have a family? Oh, it's very short because the longer they make it, no one will be there to listen. But was your life as short as those few hours given in a eulogy in a funeral? You lived a longer life, yes? But that time you are done when they are in their funeral, you are given a short moment for your story. Your story, your sto your story is as short as whoever reads the eulogy. And then people come with their black or their white. And some Three quarters of them just crocodile tears. I'm sorry. Not everybody is mourning. And then the family is left now to carry on from there. And everyone is gone. But that's the life you live in. And you don't know your story. You don't know if you'll be buried. You don't know if you'll be blown into pieces. We don't know. So when that happens, when you are gone, where will you go? Will you be received by hell? Or will God receive you? And you know, once you're gone, you're gone. Your story ends. Because as others die, others are born. So where are you? What's the condition of your heart? Forgive those people. Release those people. Yes, they did so much pain to you. They took away everything. They, you have physical scars. You have emotional scars. You have mental scars. I urge you, let it go. It's not easy. You want to punch that wall. You want to kick let it go. It hurts. 
it breaks but let it go and keep going just trust in god doesn't matter what the world says no matter how many yoga meditations you will do you 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 say in your opening your third day what are you opening what are you opening you're opening demons back you're from an abusive relationship you go do yoga say this is helping me you're not it don't help you there's someone in other demons so the problem you had you have triple why are the yoga teachers always the most angry and bitter people all the time and you wonder man i thought you are calmness and whatever life is spiritual and our lord jesus christ didn't tell us it's going to be easy daniel was told it's going to be worse than ever been so i need you to look at this picture the horror of life look at everything you've known of history the brutality the wickedness that was done in colonization pop up that picture in your mind what people were cut of this sport we have whether it's basketball baseball golf what's the history behind all this is what go do your research and go do the history behind every sport that you watch what was the history my friend once you understand it we'll take two steps back from what wherever you support once you understand the history of a basketball where did it all start the history of all these sports to break you what was done to another person and then it was desensitized and everybody celebrates what is behind the drafting of sports understand the beginning to the end understand the history by god's grace we still have content we can be able to dig do your research get into you have youtube you have rumble you have bitchute you have there are so many out there get the right content discern don't live a life of i wake up i sleep i die your life has a purpose life is spiritual You can't say I'm waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ and what are you doing I'm sitting there waiting for him you are a fool he should find you doing something he's given you the talent the skills that you have you don't have to work for I don't know the biggest companies do you know how to sell sell do you know how to fish fish whatever you do do it for the glory of God And don't worry what the world says the world will keep talking if you are silent it will talk if you are talking it will talk you live you talk you die you talk you die they start saying oh this person even in their death oh, look at the house they lived look at that car. you think when people come into your house they are visiting you either you have in your child has been born or the, the baby visits or an event you think when they come to the home they are not looking at your house looking for something to go gossip as they leave they will go they say look at this person he talks like this but look at his cap look at this people will talk so let them talk but make sure that you and god have a personal relationship because what will you do if you are daniel you are being taken away by king nebuchadnezzar would you pray for the king nebuchadnezzar like daniel prayed for him yet king nebuchadnezzar was slaughtered in his own people would you stand up and rise up like shadrach meshach and abednego when you know the king to whom you're standing against will finish you and he threw them into the furnace are you ready for that are you ready to go head to head with the pharaoh like moses knowing what pharaoh was capable of physically and spiritually let's not raise soft era kind of christians Yes you're going to make mistakes. Yes you're going to fall into sin. Yes there are things you will do that you will not like. Yes you're going to make lapses of judgment. But so what? You're human. As long as you don't justify sin. Good. If you justify sin, there's a problem right there. You make it habitual, then you're taking advantage of the grace which is sufficient and trust to me, God is not tested and God is not mocked. So forgive those that person who has broken every Yes you forgive you release them and go and you put your walls put those boundaries move on but be live a life that you're prepared that bible read it chapter to chapter finish that book finish and not just read it live the life that god has put it there put on the full armor of god have the fruits of the holy spirit let people look at you and say i want to serve that god of that person you see it's so sad that when you want to share the gospel to someone even your own modesty is questionable you are a man you want to come and share the gospel put it on your shorts Get people are looking at but they're not thinking no you do not a lady your boobs are out there which gospel are, are you sending they're like okay maybe there's a redefined one that we've never had before 
let people be able to be attracted to God through the life that you are living. Be the vessel that can be used. Be the temple that God wants. Be not defiled. I'm not saying you won't make life. In this world, you will be offended and you will take offense. But don't let offense die by the day of the night. The sun to go down. Forgive them, release them. I'm not saying sometimes though it won't recall. It will come. But release it. It's not worth it. Keep going. Keep moving. You think the world will end? Because you are so good or it doesn't work like that. Politicians who stop being wicked. They won't stop hunting down and coming after brothers, sisters, your children. They won't stop. But you know what can stop? You. How you choose to live in this world that is wicked. You think there's a country that is safe. None is. And whichever is, it, it won't be for long. Because life is spiritual. So pray. Discern. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray. You think these churches are there for long? They'll all be shut down. You know why? Because three quarters of them have been so compromised. So they will be shut down. God will allow it to happen. Because he wants a personal relationship between him and you. How did Jeremiah survive? How did Ezekiel survive? How did Daniel survive? How did Moses survive? How did Abraham survive? How did Enoch survive? How did our Lord Jesus Christ survive? How did the apostles survive? personal relationship with God, friend to friend conversation. Tell him your pain. Tell him I am hungry. Tell him I am, I am angry, not only the stomach angry, but rage. Lord, take away the pain. Take away. Tell him your problems. Talk to him before you tell anyone, before you run into a social media or your parent or whoever it is you trust. Start with God. That thing that is very weighty, start with God. You've been called for an interview. Pray about it. You've been called into a podcast. Pray about it. You've seen someone you like and it's just a fling and you're already feeling your vibe in a way. Pray about it. Don't be led by emotions. Be led by Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit transform you. Because yes, the world is not going to get any easier. I'm sorry. But which one do you prefer? The lie or the truth? You rather suffer in truth than in lies. So let God be your guide. Live a life of preparation. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Have a personal relationship with God. Because a time will come you can't run with that Bible. And if you have not fed your spirit, I pity you. Look at scripture. Wars. And you don't know what your neighboring country is planning on you. You don't know what your politician is planning. That home, that community you are living under could be their target. A mineral could be found and then they decide all of you go. You think media will care about you? They won't. They'll give you a name. The resistance. The this. And then they'll call you terrorist. But they've robbed you your home. They've robbed you your livelihood. That's the world. They will give you a name. They will take away your fish from the lake and then they'll call you a terrorist for wanting to go and fish in that place. They will take away your farm. You will rise up and say this is wrong. They will call you the resistance. They will call in the army on you. This is the world we live in. It's painful. It's painful. But let God be the one to guide you. We are not the first ones. Ask anyone who survived the first world war and the second world war. They still don't believe they are alive. So when you're telling about that, that word, they're like, God, uh -uh, this one now take me before this one happens. I have no strength to, to, to survive how I survived in the two previous wars. So let God be your guide. So for those who think the world's getting better, I'm sorry for you. But I have a question for you. Are you prepared? Use your skills and your talent to serve God. And God will protect you. And even if you leave this world, fine. But may you leave it and be under the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ but than burn in hell for eternity. Burn in hell and they be thrown in the lake of fire for eternity. No one who chooses this path of our Lord Jesus Christ does not have a scar. You have, in this day and age, you have physical scars, you have spiritual scars, and you have digital scars. But stand your ground because no one goes to war looks behind. You don't go to war. And let's say you have the, the ones who normally cook. You don't go to war and say, hey, I left the chicken in the plate. You'll be shot down. We go. No farmer goes plowing 
with their oxen and then they're looking back. No, by the time you look in front, the things will be, will, well, I mean, when you're tilling the land, you till looking behind, you will cut yourself with that gem or whatever you are using, the tool that you're using, you look in front. The full arm of God, do you have anything on the behind? No. Front. So let God be your guide. God help us all. God help us all.